Hello and welcome to a new adventure. So what am I doing stood in the middle of this grassy knoll, right in between a major dual carriageway through Bradford on the A650? Well, I'm here to look at the exact location of the famous Adolphus Street station that used to be here many years ago. Just to give you some bearings on where we are. So this is the main A650 running left to right here. And right there is all that remains of the, well, the area surrounding the old Adolphus Street station. Now Adolphus Street is what the station was named after, it was somewhere here. Not anymore, because it's all this brand new road system, as you can see. But it used to be a load of terraced streets down here with houses everywhere and Adolphus Street ran somewhere along the front of here. And the main Adolphus Street station building was actually in here where this mound is today in between both roads. And it extended from over here all the way across and ended somewhere about where my finger is there. But like I say today, it is nothing more than a pile of rubble which has now got trees and brambles growing out of it. But that used to be where the station was but if you look a bit closely in there, you can see that mound right in the middle. I'm going to guess again, like all these videos that I do, that that is probably all the rubble and waste when they made this dual carriageway piled up underneath there. I've made it up onto the mound and it's hard to believe that probably at this level where I am right now, looking in that direction was Adolphus Street Station right underneath where I'm stood now. So I probably would have been at platform level and heading from right over there across to the other side. So if I was to stand here right now, I'm going to fade a picture in for you and try to give you an idea of what I'm waffling on about. And you'll see the length of the goods station heading towards the other side of the road, which now cuts right through the middle of it and what remains on the other side, which we'll go take a look at very shortly. But I would have been almost at the front of the station building, looking backwards. And I believe the actual frontage of the building would have been somewhere around here. So I pinpointed it on the map as to sort of two thirds across this little mound here. So what I'm gonna do now is head over the other side of the road over there and then show you a picture looking back this way with the frontage in it. Now just on my way over to the other side, I've just spotted this hole in the ground right here. And again, I'm on this pile of rubble. And if you look down there, you can't actually see, well, I can anyway, big stone blocks right there. Huge stone blocks. And also some more over here. So definitely the rubble pile from what remains. As you can see, these stone blocks on the walls over there. So as always with these kind of things, when they build these road projects and these uh, big schemes in the cities, because they don't have anywhere to put all that rubble and it costs a lot of money to dispose of it, they tend to use it for landscaping and uh, making mounds like this one. So what you'll find is a lot of it is still there and buried. So here we are on the corner of Bolling Road, which joins the A650 right here. And it's hard to imagine when you look at this, but I'm gonna fade a picture in now that shows the frontage of Adolphus Street Station with Adolphus Street running right in front of it and a pub or a hotel on the right hand side of it, the white building. It looks so different today. When they do these large road schemes, they just absolutely obliterate anything that used to be there. And then I'm gonna show you another picture. And there's the mound right in front of us there that I was just walking on. This picture is taken from around this point here and shows, again, the frontage of the station and the white hotel building, along with Adolphus Street running right in front of us there. So as you can see, the frontage would have been directly on that mound in the middle where we were stood at the beginning of the video. And then zoom back out to today. Again, not what you expect to see these days. 
Well, now it is. All these modern road schemes, etc. And then just back to the side of the mound where I was, we're going to do this photo fade now, which shows a train crash that happened at Adolfo Street goods station. And it was quite a famous one, where a, a loco rolled all the way down the hill from Leicesterdyke station and couldn't be stopped and ended up ploughing right through the front of Adolfo Street and out the side of it and down the wall onto the road. Now, a lot of people think that this scene was taken or well, this picture was taken further down in front of me, but it wasn't. It was right next to the station building, which would have been to my right-hand side right here. Now, a lot of people think that the walls that you see over there, which we're going to take a look at now, are the remains of the station. They're not. That was actually the back end of the station where it came out of the building and you had the uh, retaining walls for the goods yard behind it. That's what's left over there. The actual station building ended somewhere about where the road starts, so just over there, and headed this way. So that scene, or the picture of the crash, which was right on the front at the side of the building, would have been right here, because that's where the front of the station was. So let's head over to where the remains are, or any of the remains are, because there's nothing left on this side. And there's a lot of walls and things to look at over here, so let's get a bit closer to them. Here we are on Dryden Street, just opposite the mound. And there is another mound right there. Again, definitely gonna be stuff underneath that. But it's only this section here where you actually see anything that remains or resembles what used to be here. Now you do have an old access road, which is still here today and used as a footpath, as you can see, which runs up the side here and enters the yard at the top. So where it levels out, up there would have been probably where all the trucks or the wagons whatever they used back then used to head up and unload their goods at the side or pick them up from the railway and take them into the city center but it's good to see that all this still remains and if we just look on the right hand side here is a bricked up doorway i love these things so i think the station building would have ended somewhere about here so that big wall that you see, you saw in the picture with the windows in would have been somewhere around here. So I would just love to take a couple of bricks out of that or stones and peer inside there because I'm betting there is something behind there. Probably filled in, but still something there. Now I believe that this would have entered the actual building itself, which would have been on the right hand side here. So you probably would have got up some steps in here and up this way to enter the back of the building and maybe even went into the basement levels. Who knows? I don't know how far the basement levels continued from the main building under here. So it could have entered the basement level. I have no idea. There's not much detail on the maps and things. Yeah, this still remains. So let's head up this track here, which used to be the old road access. So as we're making our way up here, I just want to say as well, this used to be Bradford's original passenger station. It was the first one. So they used this for the, the passengers. And then when the exchange opened or the first edition of the exchange, that then became the new Bradford passenger station with it being further towards the town center and a lot closer for people that are very lazy even today. But this just a few hundred yards further up the hill would have been too much trouble. And so they relocated it down there. And this became a good station, a bit like the one in Leeds when the Hunslet Lane station was the main passenger station for Leeds. And then as the newer one opened in the middle, that became a good station. And that's exactly what happened here. But the weird thing is, when they were discussing HS3 or Northern Powerhouse Rail, whatever you want to call it, that were never going to happen anyway. When they were discussing that, there was actually talks of reopening this site here as Bradford's main station and having the line come through from Leeds directly into here and then head on to Manchester. So you would have had a new station right here, which would have made the interchange as it is today obsolete. So it would have reversed itself. Again, we go back in time, we do things that we've already done hundreds of years ago. But anyway, that's not going to happen. Not that I'm aware of anyway. So. This site is going to be safe for now, but it is a wholesale market today, St. James's Wholesale Market, so it is in use.
And as we peer off the wall, just down at this industrial site here, this all used to be sidings and goods sheds. If you look on the old maps, it is an absolute mess of railway lines and buildings. Now I know for definite there was a huge goods shed or a good warehouse right there and some coal drops just up here, which we will take a look at in this video. And all the lines used to come in from the back end there from Leicesterdyke, which would have been at the top of the hill or Leicesterdyke station, as it was known. No longer there, of course. The line's still there, but the station has now gone. So now today's railway line comes in on the original route, but then it curves off round the back and into the back of what we call the interchange today, which was exchange down there. And this line used to sprout off here. All gone now. All the bridges and stuff are still intact further up. But yeah, as you can see today, it's now St. James's Wholesale Market, which is the, well, it's still a goods site, pretty much a modern version of it. And this would have been exactly what was there back then, where produce came in from who knows where and was deposited inside the large station building and then taken down here. So again, you can see the alignment of this road here that I'm walking on. It's now a footpath, like I say, but it would have been a road. And you can actually see where it widens out here for the uh, trucks or whatever to turn the sharp left down and down the hill to the main road. And let's just have a quick nosy at this wall edge here. So this is as far as we can go because of the fence, but yeah, this is the original level of the goods station site. Straightforward down there. And I've just spotted these as I'm making my way down. The old sets or cobbles, which would have been the road surface, still there today, hiding in the bushes. Like I say, you must always head off the beaten path. And that's today's tarmac footpath right there. Now my curiosity has got the better of me, so I'm heading just a bit further down from the goods station just to have a look at these coal drops down here. And again, look, all this massive chunks of stone here in the floor, all piled up, again, definitely from this building. And the distinctive red railway brick, as I refer to it, you can see that in a lot of old railway construction around West Yorkshire anyway. And then down there to the retaining wall, but there is some coal drops right up here. So let's go take a look at them. So I'm just a couple of hundred yards further up from where the railway building was. And right down here are the coal drops that still remain to this day. If I put you through the fence here and pan the camera to my left, you can see the walls there that used to support the rails as they ran along. Let's get the camera angle right used to run along the top and drop the coal down. There you go, there's a better view there. So the rails would have run along there from the lines behind me and you would have been able to dump the coal down through the holes in the tracks and then away on trucks and wagons, whatever else, to deliver in the Bradford area. Now I'm just going to try and get a better view of them up here. And then we're going to head back down towards the front of where the station was. And I'm going to do another photo fade down there. And there's a slightly better view. I'll just make my way through the trees. Now you can just see the walls there. That would have supported the rails. Like I say, all intact. Just used today for storage. And uh, asbestos by the looks of it. And then I've just spotted this again, an old railway wall right at the end here. I have never been up here in my life, so I've never seen this. Oh look, that's a better view actually. We can get right down the side of it, I never knew that. There you go. So this would have been at track level right now. So the track would have branched off behind me and come in along here. And they would have parked on here and then opened the chutes in their wagons and dropped the coal down into the trucks or bins, whatever you want to call it, under there, waiting to pick up the coal and take it off into Bradford, and then reverse back out, no doubt, and back on their journeys. But you can see the old railway infrastructure here, the steps, definitely original, and more of those coal drops right there. Yeah, still exist today, like I say. 
Anyway, back to the railway wall that I spotted. So at the top of those stairs, there you go, definitely another railway wall. Like I said, I've never been down here ever, so it's all new to me. I just had a feeling there might be some stuff remaining. Again, lots of blocks and stone, and guess what? Right at track level, what do we see right there? That's definitely railway ballast, all piled up and stuff chucked on top of it. I'm just heading back down the track now and I'm going to show you the last photo fade just at the bottom of here, which depicts the crash again. But before we do, I just want to say this building or the railway building lasted right through until the 1970s, which as we all know is unusual for railway infrastructure or the old stuff anyway. Normally by the 60s, it was long gone. Then they built the St. James's Market, which is there today in the 80s, if I remember rightly. I'm sure I remember them building that when I was a kid. And uh, yeah, still there today. And one last look at that doorway before we head down here. You can clearly see that entrance there for the roadway with the huge posts at the side. And then the front of what would have been the back of the station building heading off that way. So one final photo fade to show you again depicts the crash that happened and I'm going to zoom in to the mound again for you because it, like I said earlier that's where it was not behind me like a lot of people think it was and you can see there the wall that isn't there anymore and the front of the station building from the side of it and where the train or the carriages or well, the loco and the carriages crashed through that wall and down onto the main road at the side it was absolutely Strange to see that, knowing that there's no sign of it today at all. And if I remember rightly, and I think somebody told me this years ago, that the runaway loco that crashed through the wall here was actually from the Robin Hood line, which is the very first railway line that I did when I started the channel. So I think it came from that, so I'm told. And it was based at the Ardsley Yard, which again, I've covered. And it rolled all the way down from I think the top of the hill at Dudley Hill, uh, obviously brakes failed or something like that, and it rolled all the way down the hill and smashed through the wall right over there. But a lot of people think it was this wall here. In fact, they point out that view there of where the trains came through, or the train came through and crashed down, but it wasn't. It was right over there. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed our look at the Adolphus Street Station. Again, one of Bradford's little known stations, one of the big three, and also the original passenger station for Bradford. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.